Hello, and welcome back to episode 12 of Greatest's Let's Play FTV Monster with me, Greatest. And I've made a few changes off camera. Um, well, not changes, improvements. Just extending the existing systems that we've built so far, added some new things, and I wanted to show you them just before we get started on the rest of the episode. So let's just pop downstairs, and you'll see there's a whole host of new machines. So everything from this point to the right is existing, our, our existing um, sugarcane farm. You'll notice we're still not backstoring anything because this new machinery has started to... I don't, had thousands in there, but this new machinery is starting to um, pull it away. So, the buffer chests. This is getting a third of the farm's output, which is then splitting into that one and that one, which is getting a sixth of the farm's output. So, this one goes into pulverizer to make more sugar, duplicating that one over there. This one is a manual box, a manual chest I'm putting dirt into. It's the only manual component which we need to actually improve in future, but uh, for now it's manual. I'll get to it soon. That goes into a fermenter, which reacts the sugar with the dirt, along to make the yeast. This chest reacts or with the fermenter reacts the yeast with some sugarcane to make sludge which gets pulled out of the front and into redstone furnace which gets pulled into this ender chest which is our fuel source for rotary craft should be all straightforward shouldn't be anything too um too what's the word no nope, can't remember the word here, on the other hand, I've got a new kind of uh, pipe. It's called filter pipe. And you just replace the normal transfer pipes with it. In the bottom slot, because this is heading down, we want an item filter, and that's just four redstone dust, four sticks, and a piece of string. You hold it in your inventory, right click, and then drag, uh, drag any items you want to filter into it. It's just like a copy, it doesn't take up the items. And then put it in your, your transfer your filter pipe. And a filter pipe is just a regular transfer pipe with six different dies around it. You can look it up in any eye. Um, straightforward use. And the same thing here, but this one is just got earth essence from my farms, which I'm using to make dirt over there. So hopefully, eventually I'll connect the two and away we'll go. But this one has a special use. Let's just put this back. This one filters out all the ores into this chest. Two blue, one white. So they never actually hit these chests at all anymore. If I go to Commodore's and Ingots, you'll see I have some of the weird... Well, I suppose we shouldn't call them weird ores. But yeah, they're weird ores. Um, but all the rest of my ores have been processed. Let's just pop down to our technology area. I've moved the carpet, by the way, to point blue that way instead of south. Um, just arbitrary decision. So I've head this way. Pop downstairs. Nice lighting. No need for torches. In case you wonder what these lights are, by the way. Inverted white lamps. Project Red Illumination. They're pretty handy. You see it looks like light wells all around the outside. Um, that's just lamps. No sunlight up there. But it does look quite nice. Uh, this book, by the way, just leads us back straight back to the center of the base. I just have I walk down here just to show you it, and here's the main machine hall. Isn't that nice? Come on, it's nice, isn't it? And we've got rotary craft here to start us off in the machine hall. I've not finished it, by the way. It needs more ceiling in place, and I didn't place all these blocks by hand. It was by filler. My only problem is I'm below the ocean here. If you look at my map at the top right, and the filler. Well, you probably just saw a glitch there. But the filler cut straight through the ocean bed and this whole thing filled with water. So I had to make a few changes. Uh, just generally, if that ever happens to you, just move... Um, well, you can either move the filler down or change it from clear mode to box mode. And if you don't know what a filler is, don't worry. You'll probably see it in use in the rest of the series. And I've certainly used it in other series too. So take a look at there. So here's our ultra craft area. I've shown you the inputs of this before in the other part of the base, but to get started, 
This is our ethanol crystal chest, and it goes then into currently two gasoline engines. Oh, oh don't stand on grinders. In fact, I'll just turn them off. So, these two gasoline engines, they're full with full stack behind them. This one just takes a manual chest for now of canola seeds and grinds them into lubricant. Lubricant goes down this lubricant hose, which is the same as water hose, except instead of uh, using steel uh, in the recipe, you use wood planks. Let's just recover. Back here, I've got the lubricant going into an open blocks tank, and there's obviously a lot of open blocks tanks in use here, and I will fill this up further. So, bear in mind, there's only what looks like a tiny amount at the moment, but there is actually quite a lot in there. You don't tend to use a blueprint that quickly unless you get to hydrokinetic engines, which that's going to be a subject for another letter, for another uh, episode. So from here, but here left, we've got another gasoline engine going into a grinder and a chest going into the grinder. Now the chest is that blue, blue, white. There you go. So all our ore goes straight into the grinder. It then gets pulled out of the grinder, put into a furnace, which is our same free smelting furnace that we've moved over from the other area. And that then outputs into ender chest. Now this ender chest is the same as my input ender pouch. See? Opens. That's because it's just going to be put straight back into our sorting system. We don't need to do anything special with it. The only things that will get pulled down into this chest are going to be the ores. And the ores we're taking care of automatically, automatic tripling, not quintupling yet. We're going to get there. <laughs> it takes more more infrastructure. Sorry. Sorry. Um, and this is just the steam engine powering it as we did before. So look for more in this area. We will get to it. For now, let's head back to the main area. Haven't been too many other changes. Uh, not too many episodes anyway. Um, let's just pop in here. Just neaten this up. Just removed... Yeah, covered things in the floor, etc., and, and covers, etc., stuff like that. Nothing too special. I did put a redstone clock here, and all that this does is it's every, every well, half a second or a second or so, it, it's like flipping a redstone lever, which powers this faucet to pour. And unfortunately, there's not enough to fill this at the moment, but if there was, uh, it would fill up completely, and then this item duct just pulls straight into this chest at the bottom. So you can see here I've got a block of iron. Whoops. And you can still pour normally from it. It just helps to automate things if you want to dump things in there. However, with our newer processing system, it's unlikely we'll be using this... Um, this smeltery, at least apart from very, very specific uses like smelting uh, two different metals together, things like bronze uh, or manulin uh, or the such stuff like that. You know, or casting things for, for better tools, which will be useful occasionally when I died by falling into lava from a high place by something that nudges me off. Not that I'm bitter. Still not put the same the full amount of uh, quartz on this yet. It's still only up to 15 attack damage. I had 22 on my old one. <laughs> okay, so a couple of the quick uh, updates. I have managed to actually get more uh, essence now, which let me get to extreme essence, which is one above this, which lets me create diamond seeds. And diamond seeds produce diamond essence from the farm. So from a farm, Take eight diamond essence, put it in a circle, and you get a diamond. Isn't that great? It's gotta be great, come on. Gotta, gotta like that. And of course, our usual kind of things, which is me taking this. Uh, that's a bit more. Whoops. Nether essence, which is again from nether seeds. And I can put a tiny, 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 tiny amount more on my sword to make it a little bit better. Still 15 attack damage. Gah. That'll teach me. So that's, that's about the updates so I did it off camera. 
Um, now let's get to what we're going to do on camera in this episode. Um, and yeah, let's get to that about now. So it strikes me that I've been delay off on uh, getting into Thorncraft. Um, I really should get into it because there's lots of neat little things you can do with Thorncraft. One of the main things being faster running, which would help you guys to see you be able to run around faster, which makes more stuff in one episode. So, we need to get to researching stuff. And one of the first bits of research that you can click on in your Thorncon, uh, Thorncon, yeah, Thorncon is in Artifice, the Goggles of Revealing. So, you can go and get that. Which reminds me, I'm short on scribing tools and paper. Never mind, we can come back to get that. I don't quite need it just for this one piece of research. Just to briefly explain research. Okay, now I have, do have a tutorial on this. Uh, go and look it up on my channel if you if you need to. It's called the Thorncraft 4.1 update tutorial. More popular than any of my other videos, surprisingly. Um, but the idea of this is that we link from each of these symbols to any of the others to a direct route or indirect route, whatever you want. Um, but the idea is to get to the next hexagon, we need to either use an ingredient that makes up this aspect or a product that this aspect makes up. So if this and something else made up a new aspect, we could put it here and they would link. If this is made up of two others, we could use either one and put it there, it would link. But the idea is you need to make a link between all of these so um, and you don't have to do it in a chain like the old Thorncraft you don't have to do like here 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 like that you can go to the center and then straight up and then down you can split basically and have it in multiple chains the only thing is you need them all linked so this is the goggles of revealing so how do we do that well we need to get from Precantatio to Aurum census so let's have a look what makes them up um, this is your first tab aspects of magic census is air and spiritus orum is pregantatio and air so that should be straightforward just because what we should well, it depends how many aspects I've got let's have a look um, Orum is Precontatio on air, so Precontatio air, Precontatio, no, that's not not enough, so I need to go close than that, Precontatio, air, pre okay, so I need to go Precontatio air, pre no, okay, so, I need to, go. Oh, um, Uh, fact that that won't work. I need to go back to Orum. Yeah, there we go. And then what was census again? Air and Spiritus. Okay. So can I wonder? Should be able to go Precontatio here. They aren't linking. Yeah, or Perkintatio, okay, so... Fine, so if I go... Air... Uh, Census. Yeah, 
That's the bottom ones linked. And I need to get from this. To air and then back to this. So the quickest way across usually is just to find the well two of the nearby things. Let's go backwards and forward between them. So you're going up and down the kind of construction tree if you like. And if we just right click, we've got goggles of revealing, which we can now view the recipe for. So we need four leather, two gold, and two thermometers, which are themselves... Okay, so it's a fair bit of gold, basically. Which isn't a problem, because we're now triple doors. And I need to go and kill some cows, but first of all, gold, so... I think six is enough, but let's just grab eight. Um... Yeah, six would be enough. Okay, so let's grab a few glass. And now I need to go and get some cow leather. It strikes me that I really shouldn't have come out here at night. That's enough. Ah! Go away. Go away! There we go. One entirely uneventful trip to the beef farm. And we've got four leather. Must automate that as well. In fact, is this a work table recipe? I wonder. It is workbench. Okay, which... Yeah. I'm just wondering if it's a regular one. I can never quite remember the workbench. Uh... Is it just a regular? Crafting table? Nope. I always forget how to make the workbench. Uh, where are you? There you are. Okay, work table. Ah, it's just a single table. Fine. Still needs wood anyway. So we just need some half slabs and one more piece of wood. Plank. There we go. Table. Table down. Hit it with a wand. And it's workbench. Of course, I haven't actually charged this wand up yet, so. I may have to do that off camera. Um, 
Although it strikes me that you can't really find anything to charge it with, so we shouldn't really require any V. Um, let's bring it to the wall for now. Right. This should also work as a regular work table, by the way, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, we need to make and get four shards. Doesn't matter which ones, any ones you like. Just make it more four. Ah, two more thermometers, which needs four more th shards. You'll do. So, looking forward to the uh, the speed boots. Um, I can't even say how much I'm looking forward to them. Um, gold, isn't it? Two thermometers, gold front and back, and then it's just the leather, a strap, basically. And it does require V. Which it's nearly impossible to get without uh, finding some nodes, which these let you see. So, yeah. Why don't I go and see if I can squint into the uh, wilderness to find some nodes without that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so how are we going to recharge this wand? Well, I've already got it done it. See if I hold shift. I've got quite a bit of uh, essential, or V, sorry, V. Um, and the node's right there in the middle of the screen. You probably can't see it. That's why you use your thermometer much easier to see now and if we get closer and scan it this one is uh, sorry terra and um, fire so there's 31 of each in there so I can safely pull AC is that 28 now nodes nodes like this do naturally regenerate over time but not when the chunk, not when they're not chunk loaded, or at least maybe that's been changed. I'm almost sure that was changed. In older versions, they didn't use to regenerate. Now, hopefully, they should compensate for not being loaded, because I'm certainly not going to walk around there and put chunk loaders under every single one of them. So now we've got the wand. Let's go and make the goggles revealing, which pretty much makes that effect, this effect, permanent when you're wearing the goggles. It's exactly what we want if we're going to run around. They're really hard to see if you don't use your thermometer, so, you know, make sure you do. So let's complete this now and get our goggles. Goggles are revealing. And they give a V discount of 5%. I will go into what that is later. So I'm wearing them now, and you can see at the bottom left. It's got an armor value, but obviously it doesn't look like anything's changed. But now it's the same effect as if I was using the thermometer. So I can now see the nodes. Come on. I can now see the nodes and I can make, uh, or I can recharge my wand. In fact, if you look through the building now, you can see I'm seeing them off in the distance through the building over the water and if you're using a boat on water that's one of the easiest ways to find them big flat areas are best uh, the other way of doing it is uh, well any large flat area so sand on a desert that's generally good uh, let's go and scan these actually oh that brings up another point whenever you make anything complex like these machines scan them Look at all those aspects. So how do you do it on this? You just got to be the right distance away. Huge amounts of each of the aspects. Now that only works so far until you get to a maximum of 50, I think, in each aspect. Let's go have a look at the research table. See how some of them are quite high, otherwise really low. 
I don't think I've got near 50 yet, so... You just be keeping on that thing on the bottom, bottom right, on the aspect list. When it gets to the point where it says uh, you're only getting like one aspect, even though you know you've scanned a lot, then you know it's capping and you don't need to, or you shouldn't use it anymore. There you go. Lots of research points for our chests. So that's quick one recharging and that's initial recharging on these. Let's go and see what that node is. You'll still need the thorn to scan it, by the way. It's very likely to be an aqua node if it's over water, so just bear that in mind. Thankfully, I uh Ah, this is an air and an aqua. Good. And it's 50 of each, so if I just hold right click. My one's only 25, so. Yo, by the way, with the goggles revealing, you can also see directly on your screen what aspects each of those are. Great. This would happen to be right next to the other walkway. Come on. Need some kind of seal form. <laughs> Swimming increase. I wonder if you can get boots of... Oh, well, we'll come on to boots of the traveler when we get into those. So this one's an order, air, and aqua. Also very nice. And this one... It's a Terra and Aqua. So I can get Auto from here. Or at least I can. I can remain in water. It's quite difficult. Uh, one of the other things to note is try not to drain them. If you get them to one, I think it's one, maybe below one. Obviously, that'd be zero. Uh, they have a chance of uh, dropping down to the next, or not recharging at all. So just be aware of that and uh, try not to drain them. That's why it's so helpful to at least um, use your thermometer carefully and your wand not to deplete them until you um, get some of the more advanced research. Speaking of more advanced research, um, I think, yeah, I... I I did actually already pick up the research paper for this, but I didn't actually finish the research, so... Uh, magic... Advanced node tapping. Okay. So if we look in the thermometer... A thermometer? Thermonomic uneven. This first tab is quite important. These nodes down here are really important. They are thinking about the speed of grabbing V from the node and I think it's this one maybe that one um, they also stop you from draining it completely automatically before that you've got to be careful until when you've got that you don't have to be careful anymore and then down here I think is the the research mastery uh, and that allows uh, well let's let's research that first and we'll I don't want to spoil it for you Advanced node tapping. Oh god, now there's four of them. Fine. I'm not going to keep doing these puzzles on screen because, you know, you can probably do these yourself. Uh, there are helpers online if you want to, like me, if you've done these puzzles so many times, you don't want to keep figuring them out each time. And there are helpers online that will help you solve these puzzles. And feel free to do that if you've done it a few times before. But at least try it once or twice if you're... Um, using the mod, the mod for the first time. There we have advanced node tapping. That's just one possible of, of many, many different solutions. So if we look at that, we've now opened up node preserver. That was the, um, uh, the item I told you about before. It's, in fact, it's one of the more important ones. Let's go and uh, grab some paper for this. Uh, let's 
grab the tools and paper and just click. Just grab the tools back in. And we're back again with another puzzle. So we've now only got three elements to link. Lucrum is, uh, yeah, that's the one you get for scanning gold. Okay, so I've got plenty more research to do, and so to probably you if you're following along. Uh, similarly, there's master node tapping. Um, that's just this is just increasing the speed of them brightly. That's the important one though, so you don't accidentally break anything. You can just hold right click all day long. Um, but for us, where is where do we want to go? Somewhat annoying. It may be hidden to start off with. We want an item called Boots of the Traveller, and it's definitely going to be in one of these, so I'm probably going to have to get more research done before I can get there. But I'm probably going to need infusion, I think, so it's going to be a way off yet. But most importantly, get these, then we can start doing more research, doing refilling, making things, which is exactly what we want for magic. So that's just the start off uh, to Thorncraft. Now uh, we'll may come back to it, but I may come back to it once I've got all the research done. Uh, at a certain point, one of these series, I may just get the creative book spawned in to give me all the research because I've done it quite a few times and it's, um, it's a very laborious thing. It's okay if you're doing it once for your world, but um, every time I do one of these series, I have to start from scratch again, and <laughs> it's quite painful. So, I think that's about it for this episode. We've obviously got now automatic ore processing for tripling ores. Uh, it's all powered by our uh, sugarcane farm, of course. We've got rotary craft moved in downstairs, and we've started on thorncraft. Not quite sure what I'm going to do the next episode yet. Maybe not more thorncraft. Maybe I'll do that in the background. Um... Yeah, there's some of the nice stuff. We can get alternative sorts of power if we want to. Maybe it's time to improve the sorting system or go into auto mining. It's kind of normally around this point where auto mining is good, but you do need vast amounts of storage for that. Um, even if you subtract all the cobble that you get from automatic mining program, automatic mining um, blocks, you tend to get a lot. A lot of stuff so yeah I'm gonna have to prepare for that one I think so maybe an upgrade to the system maybe jumping on to full ME which is always uh, always a blast anyway thanks for watching episode 12 I'll see you next time my name is Grey Duster and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this or leave a comment below complaining cheering me on whatever you want thanks for watching